Let's see. Is the cap diode from Kebab worth it instead of just running caps? Good question. Let's uh, let's pull that up. Let's pull up that product so everybody knows what we're talking about. Hold on. Uh, this is over on fpdcycle.com. And he's got a thing. I'll bet it's right here on the front page. I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, shop. I feel like I've seen this theme before. No, come on. Where? Where is it? Where is it? On sale. Batteries? Is it in batteries? No. Where the F is it? What is it called? What if I search for TDS? There we go. So this is uh, the cap diode system for motor noise suppression. We all know that, oh, we, we all know, right? We all know that a capacitor is essential for uh, filtering out electrical noise, saves your ESCs from getting fried, helps your analog and digital video be cleaner and so forth. Uh, but there's another component called the TVS diode that it has an, a different effect, but is also useful for blocking voltage spikes. And some people say that the cap alone is not as good as a cap and a TVS diode, and that leads to stuff like this. Um, I can tell you for sure that there is no harm in having a TVS diode, but there have been some questions raised lately as to whether it's actually beneficial. Um, there were some tests done. Was it Captain Bry who did the tests? I always misremember. I, I have trouble remembering this. I think it was Captain Bry, the Express LRS div, but I'm not actually sure enough to, to be confident. The chat will catch up in a minute and they'll confirm it or not. Um, and what uh, what he showed with an oscilloscope is he, he spun motors up and the argument is that when a motor gets blocked, like by a tree branch, and it stops abruptly, that creates a voltage spike that uh, fries the ESC and the TVS diode protects it. Uh, he did tests where he spun motors on a b test bench and he jammed the motor with uh, like a PVC pipe or something, shattering the prop, jamming the motor, and generating these hypothetical giant voltage spikes. Thank you, John Goblin, for the link. Thank you, John Goblin, for the link. Jai, it was Jai Smith. So, <laughs> Jai Smith and Captain Bry are both Express LRS devs, and I, I'm not. I don't know. They're. I think in my mind they fit. They're both the same person. Sorry, guys. <laughs> if I ever meet you, we'll go out. We'll go out and we'll get drinks and we'll have dinner, and then I'll then I'll know you from each other. But for now. It's just the, the the ELRS dev in my head. Apologize. I can't always remember who did what. Um, this is the testing from Jai Smith. And what he shows is that here's a baseline bare ESC with no cap or diodes. This is the electrical noise. And of course, this is bad. This is lots of electrical noise, right? And this is less electrical noise. And now we add a capacitor. Whoa, that's way better. Look at how much noise went away. And now here is a smaller capacitor. This is a 50 volt 470 microfarad. This is a 470, four, oh no, I'm sorry, I apologize. Both 470 microfarads went from 50 to 35 volts. We've got slightly more, slightly, yeah, that's, that's pretty close. What battery voltage are we using? Is this 4S or 6S? What battery voltage are we using? Jai, what battery voltage are we using? It's probably 6S. Does he say? Surely he says. Oh, well, moving on. Uh, then we do it with a 1,000 microfarad, 35 volts. So this is interesting. It uh, starts to address the question of, you know, how much, how much capacitance do you need? We go from 470, 50 volts. Or sorry, we go from 470, 35 volts to a thousand microfarads, 35 volts, there isn't, there's a little bit of difference. It actually almost kind of looks like there's a little more noise in spots. John Goblin confirms, oh, John Goblin confirms it's success. Um, and now we have a TVS diode with no capacitor. Now, this shouldn't surprise anybody because the purpose of a TVS diode is not to filter noise. It's to sort of chop off the top of voltage spikes. But it clearly shows that a TVS diode by itself is not enough. 
I see. Here's 25 volts input. That's the input voltage. Thank you. TVS diode by itself is insufficient. Here's three TVS diodes. That's actually a little better. Still not that great. Here is a capacitor and a TVS diode. And if we go back to the capacitor by itself, we see that there isn't that much difference. The TVS diode isn't doing that much. So now we're going to simulate prop wash, right? We keep going. TVS diode by itself, not good enough. And now the big one, we're going to simulate prop strikes. We're going to go to 50% throttle and stick some PVC in the, in the prop and generate some voltage spikes. And we can see we've got some voltage. I mean, it's a little hard to see because uh, maybe on the live stream, it's even harder to see. There are some little voltage spikes here going up and down, right? They are there. Here's some zoom. Here's a zoom in on these voltage spikes. These are the things that supposedly kill your ESC. Here's a major voltage spike, and hopefully he'll zoom in. Boom, boom, boom. Look at all this. But the big question is, is it going to get any better with a TVS diode? And, J and Jai's conclusion is that the TVS diode by itself is, of course, worthless. You should always run a capacitor. And is a TVS diode useful when coupled with a capacitor? Probably not because the capacitor itself is doing a lot of the filtering. And then finally, are prop spikes strikes causing voltage strikes spikes? And we can see here that the answer to that is, well, I was just saying, th these are the voltage spikes. Uh, he is saying, no, they're not the voltage spikes. These are voltage dips. Or maybe it's just that there isn't a huge voltage spike. We're seeing voltage drops. I mean, this is voltage on the y-axis, right? They're not voltage dips, says John Goblin. Help me out, John Goblin. I don't work with oscilloscopes on a daily basis. I knew the conclusion we were getting to, which is that you don't need the TVS diode. I may have misspoken here. Um, what do we, well, let's look at this carefully. The unit is voltage on the y-axis. They are voltage dips. Okay, that's right. So these voltage dips, we're seeing the voltage drop um, because we get current, because the, we, we get a massive surge in current draw, and therefore, due to the resistance, the voltage drops. Yeah. So, I see. I see. Okay. So, what this is showing us is that when the prop strikes, the voltage actually goes down and surges back. And I think what people think happens is that there's this giant ringing sort of oscillation that goes both directions. But actually, what the oscilloscope shows is that that's not true. We don't have these spikes. And because a TVS diode cuts off the top of a voltage spike, but doesn't do anything for voltage dips, the argument is that it's not really useful. This, this idea that you need a TVS diode to protect against voltage spikes doesn't seem to be true. Um, that's the argument. That's the argument. John Goblin says a battery can't supply more voltage than it normally supplies. John, I think the, the argument was going to be that there was some kind of a high frequency component that somehow resulted in an increase in voltage or, or back EMF from the motor. Yeah, exactly, John Goblin. Back EMF from the motor resulting. That's, that's what I always imagined was happening. Because, of course, a motor can act as a generator. When a motor is acted on from the outside, it acts as a generator and it pushes voltage back into the ESC. So my thinking was that when the prop strikes the motor, somehow that results in a, a surge of voltage and back EMF that destroys the ESC. But it doesn't seem like that was happening in this test. The takeaway, and I apologize, that I apologize uh, you, you know, on these live streams, I often am not prepared to answer the questions and I just sort of start off talking and do my best. I apologize that I misspoke uh, as I was trying to describe what was happening here and hopefully uh, I've set that straight. Um, uh, what I was expecting based on, uh, I've this isn't the first time I've talked about this, I thought that there were going to be some voltage spikes but they weren't big enough to really matter and the capacitor was good enough. This is actually a different test than I saw previously and in this test 
There essentially are no voltage spikes. It's only voltage dips, and the TVS is useless for that. So hopefully we've set that straight. TVS diode might make you feel better. It probably isn't hurting, and it might help in some circumstances, but the common claim that TVS diodes stop voltage spikes when your motors get blocked doesn't seem to be borne out by testing. Okay, that's the kind of live stream I like to do. Oh, yeah, TVS diodes and oscilloscopes. And then mistakenly misreading the oscilloscope trace because I don't work with oscilloscopes all day. I'm like, wait a minute. As I was saying it, I was like, that sure looks like it goes down. Well, I'll just keep talking and everything will probably be fine. <laughs> so the question then, here's the question. Here's the question. Because as uh, Bad for Life says, blowing an ESC from a prop strike is weird. I've seen it jammed in the branch or turtle mode. And that's where it happens more. Here's the question that I don't have an answer for. And all you smart people out there with your oscilloscopes, you need to tell me the answer. We all know that FETs blow and ESCs die when you have a motor that's jammed up, right? And then it's like, duck, 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 you're trying to turtle mode out. And then you blow it. So, if, if slamming the motor like that doesn't cause voltage spikes, how does the ESC die? The answer must be over current, right? That's the only, that's really, well, physical trauma, like literally hitting the ESC with a hammer. Uh, that's not happening. There are two main things that kill an ESC. Over, or, or let's speak generally. There are two main things that kill a FET, because MOSFETs are not unique to ESCs. Over voltage and over current, which results in overheating. Are we arguing that when the motor is jammed, this is, this is just true for brushless motors and brushed motors too. When the motor is jammed, the motor draws a lot more current. And since the motor is jammed, the ESC soaks too much current, heats up, and blows the FET. Like, something doesn't feel right about that. Because when ESCs overheat and the FET blows, like, what I've seen happen is that literally the solder will melt or something and the, e and the FET will kind of move. I don't know. I think that has to be the takeaway, though, that... It is, it's, it's overcurrent that blows FETs, not voltage spikes. Because we can't, Jai couldn't reproduce voltage spikes on the bench. I don't know. Yeah, those voltage dips are current surges. But there you go. Good discussion. Good discussion, everybody.